<coughs> Hello and welcome to Sim.bc, where today is a beautiful weather outside. I mean, mates, I'm talking like once in a lifetime stuff. Yeah, I've been walking around, cleaning my entire apartment with everything open, just blasting music in every direction that I choose, right? I've had a balcony door open, I've had a window open, I had my front door open. And as any general person out there in the world where is, where is this once in a lifetime experience of a weather, I shut everything down and lock myself inside to uh, talk to myself. <coughs> Yeah, well, everything sounds mental when you paint it like that, now doesn't it? Anyway, mates, anyway, anyway, today I am joining you at 10 past 5 in the afternoon, the pre-evening, I'd say. And it's not any day, though. No, 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 I'm not joining you in in any day, not just any day. No, obviously not, of course not. That would be weird, wouldn't it? Because today is a Saturday. Oh, <gasps> it's Saturday. And you know what that entails, don't you? You know what a Saturday is all about right here, right now, at my little corner of the internet, at this channel, at the very least, for all of this year. It's a Saturday. What? It's the Saturday News Recap. What do you say? It's the Saturday News Recap. 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 It's the SNR, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else out there. It's the SNR today. Which basically means if you're new to the channel, right? If you're new to the format, that I will be reviewing some rather interesting news pieces. You know, stuff that stood out over the week. And spoiler alert, haven't been that much. Uh, <laughs> uh, but things that have stood out over the week and sometimes it's not just the specific news piece itself that we're kind of reviewing, talking back to, try to inform about. No, sometimes it's the discussion raised of said news piece, yeah? Because it's always interesting to take that into consideration. Uh, and yet again, as I said, if we're going into this, today I have like semi three news pieces internationally, nothing along the lines over here though. It's not probably the first time I don't have a quote unquote localized news around the channel for like the year, <laughs> which is sort of funny. Uh, but we will probably have some cataclysmic ones in, a, in the very near future when I'm moving and trying to figure out how I'm going to do all of this whilst moving. So, without any further ado, mates, let's get into it. And as I said just, you know, a few moments ago, spoiler alert, there weren't that many interesting news pieces this week. At least not as I found, right? I've been preoccupied with other things, though. Fair to say. Uh, but still, I haven't found really that much things that is caught my eye. Now, obviously, we can start with the first one. Uh, the China, US, Russia, whatever other country you want to throw into the mix, I would argue it affects globally. Trade war is going on. Yes, indeed. The uh, putting up tariffs, the putting up supplies, the putting up suspension and suspension, whatever you might say. But the taxes are raising the import and export taxes. <gasps> But we've been talking about this for the last month. The last bloody month. It's probably every SNR for the last month. I've been talking about the trade wars. If you want to have my opinion on it, then check out the previous one. But I would just like to mention, yeah, it continues. It seems to be the one thing that media don't want to let go, right? I mean, sometimes celebrities die out there. And it's the biggest thing for like two days. And then the media is just like, you know what? We've celebrated said person. Let's move on to the next thing. Kitten stuck in a tree. Because that's what people want to read about. They want the new stuff. They want the new and exciting stuff. But right now it's just the US and China. US and Russia. Russia and China. Russia and China versus the US. And it's, it's mind-blowing that it's news by this point. I mean, there is some development, sure, and it's good that the media is actually sticking with a story that has some impact on the different nations and worldwide and internationally. Yes, it is good, but it's just confusing to me to see that this is a trend that tends to, you know, work. That, that they're actually keeping with the story. I like it. It's just weird, uh, in a way. But it's, it's weird in a good way. I wish they would do that with more stories, just keep them up. Joining you, of course, with the cup of green, think about the environment, yeah? Cup of green, 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 green thinking, yeah, that probably works, right? Yeah, I never learned, do I? It's too hot. Um, the second piece of news, and this is going to be rather quick, yet again, there haven't been that many things that I thought was that interesting this week, <laughs> which will be evidently shown by this next piece that 
Dropbox was founded by two guys who never met before because one of them, the guy with the original idea, was in Silicon Valley in 2007, I believe it was, when he was 24 and he needed to get some funding, but in order to get the funding he needed to share the, or split the, um, the risk, I'd say, that he have to invite someone else to join in. That was sort of, you know, everything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was amazing to see someone, and this is more of a such a thing where a discussion is kind of breaking out. Kind of interesting to see that someone who didn't have the connection, but had an idea, actually fulfilled that idea, yeah? Went out to actually look for the potential in other people. Was like, you know what, I can't get the funding all by myself. I can't really fulfill this idea all by myself. But instead of shutting down there, instead of saying, you know what, I don't have the necessary people in my network, he tried to utilize his existing network and reach out to other people. And if that didn't work, he reached out and made new connections, entirely new ones. And I just Think two, thumb, two thumbs fresh. It's nice to hear. It's nice to see how people are developing ideas, even though it might have been like 10, 11, 20 years ago that it happened. It's still nice to see that it worked back then. It will probably work now. So think about that. If you have a brilliant idea, but you don't have the funding, you can't get the funding and you don't know the people that you can be interacted with in order to get the funding. Networking, networking, networking. And if you want to know more about that, check out the... Oh, what a nice plug this is going to be. Check out the... Uh, Founders Problem, a project we did a while back where I'm going through all the things that I deem to be necessary for a startup, yeah? Yet again, world-renowning, 22-year-old, fresh graduate, I know everything about the world there is to know. So take everything with a grain of salt. Now, the last news piece, and wow, we're really going through this SNR in lightning speed today. Um, but some weeks just aren't like that, aren't they? Uh, the last thing I want to take up was I saw a guy evicting four mothers because they had an additional child, each of them. Um, and people were like, this is heartbreaking news, this is the worst thing ever. How can a person evict people just because they were having children? And it was based on the idea that the boiler or something needed to be refreshed more often. I think this was in the UK if you want some context established. Um, and it was something along the lines of boilers need to be fresh more often and the families weren't suited, so to say, economically to viably make that choice, so to say. And uh, this obviously brings up the discussion, or rather takes up the discussion, of the harmonious behavior. Where is the harmony between the humanity and what we're supposed to do? Because obviously it's wrong to evict newly, I was gonna say newlywed, but people who have, you know, new mothers or new dads, uh, people who just got a child. It's, it's, it's harsh and kind of wrong in all sorts of directions, if you look at it from a humanitarian perspective, to kick them out from where they live. Just pull the rug out from where, uh, from under them and not provide them with a roof over their head. Now that is quite wrong. However, from a business side and a business point of view, if they are estimated not to be able to pay the amount, of, well, amount that they need to pay each month, then it doesn't make economical sense to keep them there. And it's something that is probably needed to be discussed, especially when we have, and this is going to be very far-fetched and go off the rails quickly. I realize that now, even before I talk, but I'm still going to do it. Take up the point. Uh, it's very important that we take up this, because even though this might be, some people are like, oh, it's only for people, they can find new places to live at, it might be based on races, and that's not good, we can focus on that. I think we should focus on the, as I said, the harmony between humanitarian perspective and the actual financial business perspective. One can see it as CSR, social corporate responsibility, sure, to, or corporate social responsibility, sure, to some degree that can be something that you can view as the harmony between humanitarian perspective and economics, sure, you can say that, but it's something that needs to be covered a lot more and something that more companies need to have a firmer understanding of what they're supposed to do in certain situations in order to avoid this. Now, this is obviously bad publicity for the company, but imagine though, yeah, just imagine, and here is the far-fetched point. Just imagine if the uh, living situation on Earth gets worse because of global warming. Yet again, green teammates, think about the planet, yeah, think about the planet. Uh, but what if the living conditions overall in the world, yeah, in the on the entire planet just gets worse uh, and more people need to move and they need to move to locations where they're already living people and it's already uh, quote-unquote considered to be uh, densely populated 
And the space that isn't populated is needed for, I don't know, culture or something like that. I don't know what sort of uh, excuses they make. But it could also be for farmland so that we can actually sustain some form of crops so that we can survive as a species, right? Um, people still want to move there because obviously the place where they're living is dangerous, ininhabitable or for any other reason, race with warriors. Yeah, uh, what I'm trying to get at is that we can have a lot of refugees based on, uh, well circumstances you know natural disaster circumstances so that they need to move away from where they live not that anybody probably wants to move away from where they were born but they probably won't have any choice and that brings in to the discussion well then we need to have a f more firm grip on this harmony between the humanitarian perspective and the economy if we get a lot of natural disaster refugees so refugees based on a natural disaster in their home uh, nation. The reason why I say this is because to some degree it doesn't make e that much economical sense to just put up shelters for everyone and have them there and let the, uh, the nation pay for that. But obviously we should do it because, you know, a humanitarian perspective. It's the right thing to do. Wouldn't argue that for a second, right? We absolutely should help all the people that we can help. But we need to make a sort of estimate of how we value money in compare an, an economic incentive in comparison to the humanity you know the humanity of the situation so kind of reading off the context trying to quantify the amount and this is probably a really bad way of doing it i'm not suggesting this as the firm and one solution that we're gonna uh, replace and put into motion right but just one idea that we sort of try to quantify in context the humanity of the situation and weigh that up against a economical uh, benefit and see hmm, where can we actually make the trade-off where it makes sense now obviously everybody's doing this but so that the maybe that uh, a bit more of a uh, stable or official framework was put out along the lines of this so that for instance if you say well i can save four boilers probably maybe ain't worth as much as the save upbringing of the four new children perhaps that is way more i would argue it would be right but Yet again, I'm not a full-fledged economist who has actually worked in the field and I don't know the expensiveness and how expensive boilers are and so on and so forth. But try to, uh, for the future, you know, preemptively, if this is going to happen a lot, which I reckon it might happen based on if we have a lot of refugees because of natural disaster uh, occasions or uh, origin, that we need to have a firm understanding of how we actually evaluate an economic incentive and an economic sustainable decision in relation to the humanity of the situation in context to that. Yeah, I know that might have sounded really abstract for a lot of you. What I'm trying to say, <laughs> basically, right, trying to, to put it into words here. What I'm trying to say is that for the future and for the now, I would like to see some official, what should we say, guidelines for where companies cannot do something against people, families, or refugees based on an economic incentive to motivate why they should do something uh, because the worth of the humanitarian perspective in that situation is more worth than the economic incentive would be. And that that would in some way be quantified and measured and, and controlled so that these things wouldn't happen. And especially in the future, if we have a lot of refugees based on natural disaster or war or whatever it might be, that we can say, yeah, it's no problem. Let's open shelters. Let's open our borders. Let's bring them all in. Let's help each other and not be thinking about, hmm, is there actually an economic benefit to this? No, what we should be thinking about is can we help all of our fellow people? Two thumbs fresh, mate. That's what I try to get across. Uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this might be something that is held against me in the future. I'm fully aware of that. And I will deal with that situation then when people are like, hey, you, you said one thing, but now you're executing another. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this all works out. But this is my, uh, my basic stance on it right now. Humans should be prioritized over profit in like all occasions when it's based on these sort of things and that there should be some form of guidelines of how we should uh, evaluate this in a better way than what we do right now yeah 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 have a nice one mate green tea
supporting the environment.